Here we have a Super Socket 7 retro gaming PC, maxed out pretty much, with a K6 3 Plus running at 550 MHz. The RAM is also maxed out, we have 768 MB. There's a GeForce FX 5500, the PCI version, and we got an ISA sound card with the Yamaha 718 chip, a fantastic sound card for DOS as well as Windows. We also got an ID hard drive, a DVD ROM, and a Corsair power supply. There are two previous videos based around this system, I put some links down below in the description, but today I had planned to look at the memory. Basically trying out all the different amounts of RAM like 128, 256, 512, 768, comparing single stick with 2 or 3. However, I did find some interesting results, but really it wasn't quite enough substance for an entire video. So I had a look at the previous comments and checked out a few operating systems, specifically Windows 98, Windows Millennium Edition, Windows 2000 Professional, and also Windows XP. I also checked out Nglide, which is a, a Glide wrapper that lets you play 3DFX Glide games on non-3DFX uh, video cards. And all the gaming footage in the background today is Nglide in action on this retro gaming PC. Now, lots of things actually went wrong. So some of these I was able to capture, others I'm just gonna mention and share my experience. So basically it's all about the experience. I've gained a lot of experience with the SuperSocket 7 platform that I didn't have before, especially with the Gigabyte GA. 5AX motherboard and how it behaves with different memory, different operating systems. So hopefully you find this interesting or useful and at the end of the video I will give you my recommendations as to how much RAM and what operating system I believe is the best in terms of performance and compatibility. Let's dive straight in and have a look at the performance with different amounts of memory. Here we have the DOS benchmarks. The blue chart is a single stick of 128. The orange uh, bar is a single stick of 256. The gray bar is a single 256 stick and another single stick of 128. The yellow bar is two sticks of 256. And the last bar, the light blue one, is three sticks of 256, which is the maximum of RAM the machine can handle, 768. And what we can see is that uh, with 512, megabytes of RAM, the performance actually goes down and that's across all the benchmarks apart from Doom. Now the Doom performance is quite low. It's a bug with this specific video card, nothing to do with PCI. Most PCI cards will perform much better in Doom, but we can see with 512 megabytes of RAM, performance really suffers. Now, interesting that with 768 performance goes up again, but stay tuned, there is more to this than uh, we can see under DOS. So let's switch over to 3D Mark benchmarks. We can see once again, going from uh, the lower RAM up to 512, that the performance goes down and look at the results for 768 zero and basically the uh, the benchmarks would just uh, crash or not run. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on here and this was under Windows Millennium which officially supports up to a gig of RAM. Could be something to do with the uh, video card, with the video driver, whatever. It just wouldn't do anything with Direct 3D. So let's have a look at some game benchmarks. Here we've got incoming GLQuake and Quake 2 in software mode. We can see once again with 512 megabytes of RAM that the performance is uh, lower and with 768. Once again, the 3D benchmarks, uh, 3D Direct 3D benchmarks don't work. However, OpenGL games work fine. GL Quake, also Quake 2. And I also have a Quake 2 software render result. So this is purely the CPU. And here we can see that the quickest results are with 256 um, or with 368, I believe is the number. And once again, 512 megabyte uh, slows down. So these are really interesting findings. And the jury is still out. Is this an issue with the ALI chipset? Is this an issue with just this GA5AX motherboard? But basically what that tells you guys is if you're running 512 megabytes in your uh, ALI chipset based SuperSocket motherboard, do some benchmarks. Try with uh, 256 or with 384 and see if the performance actually goes up. Maybe you encounter the same issue as I did. 
The issues with 768 megabytes of RAM are really weird. DOS doesn't care. Performance is uh, pretty much the same as with the lower amounts of video memory. Under OpenGL benchmarks in Windows, performance is a little bit reduced compared to with 256 megabyte, but it's not as slow as, for example, with 512. But that's no good because none of the direct 3D software benchmarks and games would run, which is a, a huge uh, issue. So very weird. And let me know if you experienced anything like it. I'm not quite sure what the reason is, if it's a chipset issue, issue with the BIOS, with this uh, motherboard, something with the video card, I'm not quite sure. And a few words about Anglide. I saw a few comments on that. So you need DirectX 9 to uh, install it. It worked great. Stick with the lower resolutions. The K63 processor is still a very limited processor in terms of performance. So stick with 640 by 480 and stick with older games like Tarak uh, 3D and the Test Drive 5 game. Newer games such as Unreal or Need for Speed 2 um, or Room they really don't run that well. There's lots of input lag and the frame rate uh, goes up and down. So not a good experience, but it does run. And if you have no other options, then absolutely try it out. It doesn't cost anything. It's a free download. So because I ran into all these issues, I had a go at trying out various operating systems. I'm going to start with 98 and Millennium Edition, and then I'm going to talk about 2000 and Windows XP. So with Windows 98, you get the big plus, which is, of course, the MS-DOS mode, which works out of the box. In Millennium Edition, you get USB storage support, which is great. You just plug in the USB, you can access it. So this is quite good. You also get a very polished and modern look. Now, both operating systems worked great on this machine. I had zero crashes, all the benchmarks completed. So in terms of compatibility, both are fantastic choices. Now, in terms of benchmarking, Windows Millennium Edition actually benchmarked a little bit slower and it wasn't quite obvious to me. So I had to dig a little bit deeper and I found something with the drivers and it turned out to be the sound card, specifically the drivers for the sound card. Under Windows 98, and I've installed the latest Yamaha drivers, under Windows 98 it uses the VXD drivers. Now they are known to be very lightweight and a little bit quicker, but they can be less stable. Under Millennium Edition, uh, and it has integrated drivers actually for the Yamaha sound card. It uses WDM drivers and they are simply slower. They're not as quick. And on the K6 processor, it's, it's already pretty CPU uh, limited. So performance is, uh, at a, is a rare commodity. So if you're using the WDM, uh, WDM drivers, performance actually goes down even more. And that's something I saw in the benchmarks and it's definitely uh, noticeable. So it's not just a few FPS, it's around yeah, 10, 15, 20%. Now, Windows Millennium Edition doesn't even let you install the VXD drivers. I tried to install the latest Yamaha uh, driver package and Windows Millennium just said, no, I'm not going to install that and you have to stick with the WDM drivers. Now, let's talk about Windows 2000 and Windows XP. Both operating systems, the installation was fine. I had no issues. I was able to install the AGP chipset driver, although the PCI card doesn't really use it. Uh, let's talk about Windows uh, 2000 first. Overall, I had a better experience. More things worked compared to Windows XP. So for example, in Windows XP, I, Windows XP comes with a driver for the FX5500. Um, but I wasn't able to install any other drivers. I would get crashes in Dark 3D and OpenGL games would run extremely slow, like less than a frame a second. And you couldn't, it was so slow, you couldn't even quit the game. So something really, really weird was going on. Now, Windows 2000 behaved a little bit better. I was able to install the same video card driver version that I used in 98 and Millennium. Uh, however, Direct 3D games and benchmarks did run fine, but a little bit slower compared to 98 and Millennium Edition. However, I had no luck with OpenGL games whatsoever. Both GLQuake and Quake 2 wouldn't launch. I got various error messages. So yeah, guys, there you have it. Lots of things didn't work. However, um, makes it a lot easier for me to recommend something to you. So it seems that with the K6 platform, it's better off sticking with the uh, tried and tested period correct, older stuff and using lightweight uh, drivers. So what do I recommend for the operating system? It's easy. Windows 98 is what I would recommend. It has, it's got the MS-DOS mode. 
built in and therefore you can play DOS as well as Windows games and the VXD drivers they give you better performance because they don't tax the processor that much. In terms of RAM I would go with a single stick of 256 megabytes um, plenty of RAM for games that run well on this machine and a single stick also saves you a bit of power as well. Now the PCI FX 5500 worked great um, it avoids all the AGP compatibility issues. The driver I used was version 45.23. You just have to unzip it with 7-zip and then manually install it through Device Manager by selecting the FX 5200. And the sound card, the Audition 32 Plus sound card, also worked great. It's a very good sound card for DOS and Windows, but it does lack 3D audio support such as A3D or EAX but it makes up for this really by being awesome in DOS with an authentic FM sound and excellent Sound Blaster Pro 2 compatibility. So there you have it guys. So this was a lot of uh, blood, sweat and tears packed into one video and rather than capturing everything and making several videos out of this, I just quickly uh, explained to you what happened and shared my experiences. So this just uh, shows you that uh, testing is important and Every system you build you has its own little uh, quirks and issues and in this case it, the best way is to go with Windows 98, um, 256 mega RAM. Don't go with too much RAM, it obviously causes some issues and don't run an operating system that is too new. Um, you can also run into some issues like I found out in my project. And that's it for this video guys. Check out the uh, links down below in the description for videos related to this uh, project with some resources. And as always, if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more, please subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, hit the like or the dislike button and leave me a comment down below. Do some of these issues sound familiar? Have you had success running uh, a modern, a newer operating system on a Socket 7 platform? So that's it guys. And going forward in the next video, I think we're going to look at a 1 gigahertz processor, but I'm not 100% sure. So stay tuned. Video will be up very shortly.